Want to learn engineering and science? Well, you've tuned in to the right channel. Hit subscribe and press the bell icon and never miss an update from us. Hey guys, what's up? This is your friend and tutor Manas and today the topic of discussion is projection of solids. Well, uh, first of all, we're going to go ahead and we'll try to define a solid. Now, any object or, a, or even a geometrical figure which has three dimensions, namely length, breadth and height or thickness, whatever, that can be referred to as a solid. All right. So remember this, any object having three dimensions, length, breadth and height can be referred to as a solid. Now, solid broadly has been divided into two main groups. Now, when you speak of classification, there are two types. One is polyhedron or polyhedra, while the other one is solid of revolution. Now, let me go ahead and write this. There are two types of solids or two main groups. One is what you call a polyhedron. Okay. Polyhedron. Let me write this as polyhedra over here. And the other one is solids of revolution. Solids of revolution i'm not writing the entire uh, word okay now uh, this is a big family you know solids now these are the two main members now there are different types of polyhedrons and there are different types of solids of revolutions well first of all let me make you familiar with polyhedra polyhedra is a solid bounded by plane figures or faces and when those faces are equal and regular then that sort of a polyhedra is referred to as a regular polyhedron now there are different types of polyhedrons Number one is tetrahedron. So when you speak of a tetrahedron, it has four faces. All of them are equilateral triangles. After tetrahedron uh, is the number of what you call as hexahedron. Well, hexahedron is also popularly known as a cube. When you speak of a hexahedron, it has six faces. All of them are equal squares. Okay. Then number three, it's an octahedron. And from this word octa, you must have recognized that octa refers to eight. So that means it has eight faces and all of them are equilateral triangles again. After octahedron, the next polyhedra is dodecahedron. It has 12 faces and all of them are regular pentagons. And after this, we have isocahedron. Now this isocahedron has 20 faces and all of them are equilateral triangles. All right. Now then five have been covered. Tetrahedron, hexahedron, octahedron, dodecahedron and the last one was isocahedron very difficult to pronounce anyway so the sixth spot goes to a prism what exactly is a prism let me read that out well it's a polyhedron again having two equal and similar faces called its ends parallel to each other and joined by other faces which are parallelograms or rectangles okay and the imaginary line joining the center of base to the center at the top is what you call the axis now let me show you an example and then i'm sure that you can understand what exactly a prism means so if you watch this carefully this is what you call a square prism all right guys this is the top okay and this is the base top and base are similar they are equal they are parallel top and base are joined together with the help of these so-called faces so-called rectangular faces if you watch this carefully top and base are joined together with the help of these so-called rectangular faces now the name of the kind of prism completely depends on the shape and size of the top so if the top is square in shape you are going to call that prism a square prism. If the top is triangular in shape, then you are going to call that prism a triangular prism. If the top is a pentagonal in shape, top and base both I am talking about, then that sort of a prism is what you call a pentagonal prism. And if it is hexagonal, then obviously it is a hexagonal prism. All right. Now, let me make you familiar with a bit of engineering drawing terminology when you speak of a prism. This over here is what you call the corner at the top. This is an edge at the top. This is an edge at the bottom. This is the corner at the bottom. This is the edge connecting the top with the base. This is the face connecting the top with the base. So that is essentially a terminology which I think that you guys should know. Anyways, let me wipe off the sweat. It's really, really very humid today. Anyways, so we have spoken of as many as six polyhedrons and the seventh spot uh, goes to a pyramid. Okay, so first of all, let me read out what exactly a pyramid is. And then we're going to see the different types of pyramids available. So pyramid is also, in fact, a polyhedron having a plane figure as its base and a number of triangular faces meeting at a point called vertex or apex. What does that mean? Okay, let me take this example. So guys, if you watch this carefully, this over here 
is what you call a square pyramid okay you're going to find them in egypt okay google okay so as far as a pyramid is concerned it has a plane figure as its base and if you can watch carefully this plane figure is a square so this sort of a pyramid is what you refer to as a square pyramid all right having triangular faces meeting at the top which is called the vertex or apex whatever you can see this essentially is a pyramid and to be very specific this is what you call a square pyramid now if this base let's say we replace this square with a triangle then that sort of a pyramid is what you call a triangular pyramid let's replace again it with a pentagon then that sort of a pyramid is a pentagonal pyramid let's replace again it with a hexagon then that sort of a pyramid is what you call a hexagonal pyramid all right so that was all about polyhedrons okay so guys until now we have spoken about seven types of polyhedrons we started off with tetrahedron okay then hexahedron then octahedron then dodecahedron then isocahedron then prism then pyramid that's it those are the seven types of polyhedrons okay now let's focus our attention on solid of revolution how can you define that well a solid which is generated or which is developed by rotating a plane figure about a certain axis can be referred to as a solid of revolution okay now let's say uh, we have a rectangle rectangle has four sides we keep one side fixed and we then rotate the remaining stuff what will happen it will form a cylinder and that's exactly how a cylinder is born right now the second solid of revolution is a cone so you have a right angle triangle all right so you fix this perpendicular okay and then let the remaining stuff rotate what is it going to form it's obviously going to form of cone so cone is a result of the solid of revolution of a right angle triangle rat that's it then we have a sphere so as far as a sphere is concerned you have a semicircular plane okay so this is the semicircular plane this is the straight edge you fix the straight edge and then re revolve the remaining stuff what's going to happen it will form a sphere all right so that's exactly uh, what solid of revolution is all about so until now we have seen three solids of revolution started with a uh, cylinder okay and cylinder was a result of the revolution of a rectangle about one of its sides then we saw cone cone was a result of a solid of revolution when either its perpendicular is fixed and the remaining stuff is rotated or one of its bases is fixed and the remaining stuff is rotated in both the cases you are going to get a cone and then finally we saw a sphere and sphere is basically born because a semicircular plane is rotate rotated about its straight edge that's exactly how you get a sphere <clears throat> okay then let's talk about a frustum so what's a frustum so you have in front of you a cone you cut that cone parallel to the base you re you remove the re top portion then the remaining stuff is what you refer to as a frustum and to be very specific it is the frustum of a cone that's it so you have a pyramid all right so you have a cutting plane you cut that pyramid parallel to the base again you uh, take out the remaining portion or the top portion and the stuff remaining is what you refer to as a frustum of a pyramid that's it then there is something which we refer to as truncated cylinder or a truncated cone so if you keep the cutting plane at a certain angle with respect to the base and then remove the top portion then the stuff remaining is what you call truncated cylinder or a truncated cone whatever okay now that we have seen the definition of solids now that we have seen the different types of solids uh, let's switch over to the standard procedure now this is the standard procedure which we going to use to uh, work out the projection of a solids that means creating the front and top views all right now you'll see a lot of problems in which the solid may be kept this way inclined okay its axis may be inclined to hp its axis may be inclined to the vertical plane also and there are different conditions that we have to work with all right so the standard procedure is very simple there are three steps just like in projection of planes there were three steps here also in projection of solids there are three steps step number 1 is all about assuming initial position step number 2 we have axis inclination and in step number 3 we're going to go for edge inclination initial position axis inclination edge inclination that's the three steps that we're going to be working with but the most important step is step number 1 where you have to assume the initial position all right so there are essentially two cases with which you have to go for the prediction axis either would be inclined to hp or the axis would be inclined to vp now this axis inclination is something which is going to happen in step number 2 so let me tell you something the let me tell you the impact of step number 2 on step number 1 okay now let us take this case 
guys this is what you call a square prism okay so if the axis is inclined to hp that means axis starts from here until we reach here it's, it's if it's something like this if the axis is inclined to hp then we can assume that this entire solid is resting with its base on the horizontal plane and then we just got a thing from where we can see the true shape of this well obviously the true shape of the base can be seen from the top and therefore we are going to begin by making the top view first that's the entire idea okay secondly if the axis is inclined to vp this is the axis from here till we reach here if the axis is inclined to vp then what we're going to do is we are going to slam this entire solid resting with its base on the vertical plane and then again we've got to think from where can we see the true shape of this base well obviously the true shape of this base can be seen from the front and therefore we have to begin by making the front view first so that's exactly how you need to approach and let's say in step number three we have to go for edge inclination so always remember whichever edge is inclined in step number three it initially has to be kept perpendicular to xy that's it now there are certain cases that you have to deal with in which you'll, you'll find that the face is resting on the hp that means it is going to be something like this then what are you going to do in such a case initially you have to keep it standing then again you need to ask the same question to yourself from where can you see the true shape of this base obviously from the top that's exactly if the face is resting on the vertical plane you need to keep it standing on vp and then again you have to ask a question to yourself as to from where you can see the true shape of the space obviously from the front and therefore you have to begin by making the front view first so that's exactly how you need to approach uh, for solving problems based on projection of solids let me take one more example now as far as this solid is concerned this is what you call a square pyramid okay the axis starts from the center of this square that is at this point until we reach here okay so that's the axis so sometimes you will be asked that the axis of this pyramid will be inclined to hp so our initial assumption is going to be like this we are going to assume that the entire solid is resting with its base on the horizontal plane okay and then you just got a thing from where can you see the true shape of this base well obviously the true shape of the base can be seen from the top and therefore we have to begin by making the top view first well let me change the question let me change the scenario let us say that the axis is making a certain angle with the vertical plane what would happen what would be your initial position in such a case something like this axis inclined to the vp either this way or this way whatever what you are going to assume is this you are going to keep this entire solid on the vp resting with its base on the vp and then again you need to ask the same question to yourself from where can you see the true shape of this base okay the true shape of the base can be seen from the front therefore you have to begin by making the front view first so always remember this logic this is going to be very beneficial for you and if you are successful <coughs> in creating the correct step one then i'm pretty much sure that you're going to go ahead and create the step two and step three in perfect fashion all right now there may be a question in which you you're going to be asked that one of the triangular faces of the pyramid is resting on the horizontal plane like this one of the triangular faces in the pyramid is resting on the hp in such a case your initial assumption will be like this we are going to assume that the pyramid right now is standing on the hp in such a case the true shape of the base can only be seen from the top and therefore you have to begin by making the top view first that's it now if if in the question i say that one of its triangular faces is resting on the vp what we're going to do is we're going to keep it standing on the vp okay and in such a case the true shape of the base can only be seen from the front and therefore you have to begin by making the front view first <coughs> So guys that was all from my side for today if you've got any doubt or query do write them down in the comment section below i'll be very happy to answer them and if you believe that this video tutorial has added value to your knowledge of engineering drawing or engineering graphics then do share and like this video subscribe to this channel and also uh, press the bell icon so that whenever i upload a new video you get a notification well i'll see you again with more videos on drawing and mechanics until then have a great day keep learning keep drawing thank you